almost 100 years ago, precisely on the 29th of January 2019, Polish-American diplomatic relations uh, were established, 1919, and now we will have 100th anniversary. This had not been possible, or at least much more difficult, uh, had the President Woodrow Wilson not initiated a peace plan at the end of World War I, calling for a creation of an independent Polish state in his famous 14 points. And at that time, the foremost challenge for the, for the independent Poland was to defend its borders, keep territorial integrity, rebuild the country completely destroyed during the First World War, and protect its citizens. However, Polish-American relations began much earlier when the heroes of Polish struggle for independence, Tadeusz Kościuszko and Kazimierz Pułaski, became also the heroes of the fight for the freedom of the United States of America. And even much earlier, in 1608, the first Polish settlers specializing in glass production came to America. It is impossible to name all Poles who have left their mark in the United States in recent years. Among them are Zbigniew Brzeziński, Dan knows very well, I'm sure, Steve Wozniak, founder of one of the most famous American companies, Apple. Steve was here in Poland a couple of weeks ago. I had a pleasure talking to him, and he explained to me how to build unicorns, also in the cyber, cyber security area, so much of interest, so, so important to us these days. And also Jack Chmiel, Jacek Chmiel, founder of Atari and Commodore, and James Pawelczyk, American astronaut. And there is also Susan Wojcicki, who visited Poland on the uh, 11th of November last year, 100th anniversary of our regaining of our independence. And Susan, who is currently president of YouTube, with whom I have also found common ancestors from 100 years ago. So our families are so interconnected and not also the history of our nations. Today in uh, 2019, Poles and Americans gathered at the conference co-organized by the Atlantic Council. Thank you, Daimon, and, and the most uh, valuable Polish company, PICO BP. Thank you, Zbigniew. And we, we want to talk on how to secure the fourth industrial revolution. The meeting is also underpinning Poland's ongoing digital transformation and our plan for responsible development in the three tracks. First, policy, then innovation, and private sector leadership. I hope that this conference will transform into a long-term cooperation and consequently will allow the development of Polish and American companies specializing in the broadly understood cyber security, cyber defense. I truly believe that our national speciality, that is the information technology, this is really our national treasure, will allow Polish companies taking part in today's conference to expand the scale of their activities in global scale. First, they will become unicorns in their categories and then global players. Of course, our cooperation has a political dimension too. Dan was alluding to this as well. We must defend Poland and the European Union and America against cyber attacks stealing sensitive data, and also ordinary fake news which poison the lives of societies. This direction is obligatory and obvious to me. Polish codebreakers have to save Europe in the 20th century in key military conflicts. Diamond was mentioning about this one. Once in 1920, 
first in 1920, they helped stopping the Bolshevik Revolution, and then before the World War II, they broke German enigma, indeed allowing the Allies to predict Hitler's army moves. This is the great Polish tradition, and it remains a vital part of our effort to a collective defense and security. It is crucial to grasp the importance of the threat we face. If we want to realize it, our people are in great danger, not just in the cyberspace, but real and vital. And during the European Council meetings, we dedicate more and more time to this very topic, to understanding the threats and to building appropriate protection against those threats into the uh, not so distant future. World is connected nowadays more than ever. If one of our partners' weakness is exposed, we are all exposed. Not having cyber defense policy today is equal to not having an army. Modern independent state cannot neglect this anymore. Cybersecurity is a complex ecosystem. No Western country can manage it in isolation from one another. I hope that this conference will, with, with all the wise people gathered here, will be a landmark in creating a worldwide cybersecurity system. I call on you today and encourage your leaders, your governments to spend more money on cyber warfare as we do, on cyber soldiers to protect our internet frontier. Our enemies will not wait. Dan was mentioning about this as well and I, could, I couldn't agree more with. They are arming up as we speak. And only a collective response will keep the threat at bay. And only a decisive one. For our people and our economies to be safe, we must put our cyberspace under our control. So it is not control by the people that wish us harm. I'm confident that we can do it, and I wish it to you and to Poland as well. Thank you very much for inviting me to this great conference and enjoy your conference. I wish that our efforts are connected and we truly we will build a very strong and solid backstop, a solid cyber security ecosystem for all of the free world, for all of free nations. Thank you very much.